morning. Welcome to Northridge. So glad you guys are here. Thanks for coming out in the rain to worship with us today. Let's stand and get started. I saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness run for cover. But the miracle that I just can't get over, my name. Registered in heaven. I believe in signs and wonders. I have resurrection power. Still the miracle that I just can't get over. My name is registered in heaven. So my praise belongs to you forever. Tis my testimony. From death to life, this grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Blood and washed in water. Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father. Our God will finish what He started. Yes, our God will finish what He started. This is my testimony from death to life. This praise rewrote my story. I'll testify. Testimony from death to life, cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify. Jesus Christ the righteous, I'll testify. This is my testimony. Oh, I'm alive. This is my testimony from death to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify. Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Sing 
sign to the setting sing I will praise your name great is your faithfulness to me Amen. away your word remains the same history can prove there's nothing you can't do you're faithful and true though the storms may come and the winds may blow i remain steadfast and in my heart learn when you speak a word it will come to church. Come on, church. Anybody grateful for his faithfulness this morning? Anybody testify that? Come on. Yeah. Hey, I want to welcome you to Northridge today. My name is Johnny. I get the, it's really an honor to serve as the campus pastor here and, and serve in that way. And if you're brand new with us, if you're a guest here, uh, I want to just bring something to your attention. Ask you to do one thing. Uh, thank you, by the way, for just coming and worshiping with us. But grab this connection card uh, on the seat back in front of you. Um, if you're in the front row, not many people are, but if you are, uh, you know, it, it was under you, all right? It might still be there. But grab this connection card, fill it out. Uh, that's just a way that nobody falls through the cracks. And there's a basket as you, as you exit the auditorium to put it in there. But it's also for anybody, if you've found your pla- yourself in a place where you just feel like you need prayer in your corner, and maybe you brought something in today that you're just like, I'm, I don't want anyone to know about that because that's what I'm dealing with. And it's kind of the garbage or the stuff in my life that I don't want anyone to know about. Can I just tell you, you don't have to check that at the door. I want you to bring that into this space. I want you to bring it into the space, lift it up to your heavenly father and ask him to deal with it. Because I guarantee you, ask him little by little, he will begin to deal with it. He'll begin to deal with it. And if that's you and you're like, man, I need some more people in my corner just praying for me. I want you to grab this card. 
I want you to fill it out in the back and just kind of write down what God's doing in your life. Or maybe it's not a maybe it's not a prayer request per se, but it's like I got a next step in front of me. I've got something that God's really trying to lead me to do, and and I don't really know how to do it. Well, we want to be people that walk together in life and help in these big next steps. Put that on the back of this card and put it in that basket as you exit today. One of our team members will reach out and, and just say, hey, thank you. And, you know, we'll walk through this thing, these things with you. We get together each week and just get encouraged around our giving. We believe that giving is worship around here. Uh, I, I believe, and you've probably heard me say this before, that, you know, if you're a Christ follower, if you've surrendered your life to Jesus, then then you should be the most open-handed person in the room, every room that you step foot into. Uh, that should be a, a Holy Spirit characteristic uh, in your life. And, and this is what God's Word says when it comes to generosity. It says, as you go, proclaim the message, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. In other words, serve other people, serve others. Freely you have received, freely give. Freely you have received, freely give. What does that mean? That means if you're a Christ follower, you've been given new life because God did not hold anything back from you. And he didn't hold anything back from me. And so what does he do? He says, I want you to follow after me. I want you to be just like me. I want, to, I want you to reflect me into every area of life that you get to go. And so that means, that means it looks like this, going into the workplace, going into your family, going into the classroom with open hands, with your time, your talent, and your treasure, and just saying, all right, God, I'm, I'm going to be generous because you were generous to me. It's a, it's a response to his, his mercy and his love for you and me. And I'm so grateful for the people that have already done that. And they've made it a, a practice to do that here and to partner with the ministries that flow out of this place. Those ministries happen because of you. And I just challenge you, if you call this place home, to begin to partner with the ministries that flow out of this place too. To begin being open-handed with your time, with your talent, with your treasure. And see how, God, see how God works in this place. But really, see how God works in your own heart as you turn from someone that was not generous to someone that reflects the generosity of your father. Let me pray for our giving today. God, thank you. Thank you for working in our hearts in a way that, that we get to this point where our response is generosity because we want to reflect who you are. I pray for, for any person that struggles with that today. I pray for every gift that's come in already and every gift that's going to come in in the next few days. God, that you stretch that, you stretch it as far as it can go to push your message of faith, hope, love, and a new life in Christ as far as it can go. We love you and pray this in your name. Amen. got just one with my arms stressed
Come on, my soul, don't you get shy of me, lift up your song, cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs, get up and praise the Lord. Oh, come on, my soul, don't you get shy of me, lift up your song, cause you've got a lion inside. Get up and praise the Lord. Come on, church, lift up your voice. Oh, come on, my soul. Don't you get shy. Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, 
her sing that again. Lift up your Ooh, offering of praise. Yeah. So I'll throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Because all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. I know it's not much, but I have nothing else fit for a king. Except for our hearts singing hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we don't have much to offer you. In fact, we really don't have anything to offer you except for our lives and our love in return for your life and your love. And God, that's, that's not a fair trade for you, God, but for us, God, we're filled with gratitude that you would love us the way you do. God, with a love that's bigger than any other love in the history of the world. And God, we just praise you, God. We glorify you. We thank you for the air that you put in our lungs, and we know that the sole purpose of that breath is just to return it to you in praise. And God, we do. We praise you. There's no one like you. No one else deserves the glory, the honor, the praise. No one but you. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning, church. How we doing? Everybody awake? Everybody ready to go? I'm going to tell you what, that's the second time I've sung, sang that song like that, and you guys are blessed to be behind me in my section. Just a heads up, all right? Um, but it's a, hard, it's a hard thing to get up here and talk for a few minutes after that. And so, band do a good job? Anybody think the band did a good job? Anybody? All right, yeah, yeah. Hey, we just came out of the holiday season, and if you're anything, if you got a family, anything like my family, uh, they, they get together, and, and th this is what happens. There's a few things that happen. First of all, I always, uh, there's a few things that happen when your families get together. Uh, a certain group of people, all right, they make everyone else leave the kitchen, all right? Why do they do that? Why, what do you got to get done for the holidays? Anybody? Say it loud and proud. I can't hear yeah, you got to cook. You got to cook, right? You got to, you've got to get, here, here's what I think about Thanksgiving and Christmas. I think Thanksgiving is like a rehearsal dinner for Christmas. Anybody got like, you're like, what, what meal are we going to have for Christmas? Like, well, it's always like, well, we're going to have something very similar that we did on Thanksgiving, but get the recipes right. Anybody, anybody out there? No? Hey, if, yeah, you do. You do a lot of cooking. You do a lot of eating. Uh, after a little bit of a first service poll, I, I thought eating, you know, every time we got together was a southern thing. I think it's everywhere. I think we all do it. Uh, but there's a couple of ways before, uh, before this right here was invented. And before Google was a thing, uh, there was a couple of ways that you would show up to the kitchen and begin to, to cook things, all right? Some of you are magic in the kitchen, and you don't need anything. You need no literature. You need nothing. All you need is your spice rack and a couple of utensils, and you just throw it all together, and it just a tornado happens, and voila, you got something going, and it tastes amazing. All right, but for everyone else on earth... All right, there was only a couple of ways to be able to cook something. Either you got a recipe that was passed down for years and years and years and years, and you're like, and we're making, you know, our great, great, great aunt's famous fill in the blank. Uh, or, or, like a lot of people, you would go up to that cabinet above your stove where you had so many what? Recipe, I hear recipes, but I'm looking for, you had so many cookbooks. Anybody got cookbooks? Anybody got like a stack of cookbooks? Yeah, you've got cookbooks and there's all different types of cookbooks. There's, you know, some of you, you got, you know, when someone caught a glimpse of your, the cabinet above your stove, they got you more cookbooks for Christmas. Anybody had that happen? Yeah, they were like, they like cookbooks and now you're like an encyclopedia, you know, shelf of cookbooks and you could, you could cook anything, but you've got half of them you don't use. But that, but cookbooks are interesting because when you open them up, 
you see, what do you see? Every page has what? It has one picture of the finished product. And then underneath it, it has the ingredients that you're going to need and the steps to get there. We got somebody that owns restaurants. He's just nodding his head like, you don't know what you're talking about, Johnny. I, I, don't, I don't. I don't cook anything. All right? That's why I go to your restaurant, Jesse. Um, go, go to Holy Taco. It's very good. All right. Uh, anyway, a little, 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 little push there. No, there's ingredients and there's steps, all right, but there's the finished product. You know what it doesn't show you in a cookbook? It does not show you, like if you look, if you open up a cookbook, like a, like a baking cookbook, and you see it, and you're like, there's a cake, I want to make a cake, and it's just got the finished product of the cake on there. It does not show you a counter that have 12 eggshells just dripping all over your counter. It doesn't show the batter that you tried to pour into the pan, and then a quarter of it got on the floor, and the dog is now licking up the batter off of the floor. It doesn't show you, like, the stories that happen up to the finished product. It just shows you the finished product. It only shows you the finished product. And I want you to know something this morning. You can't get the product without the process. You cannot get the product without the process. This past year, 2022, I can I know specifically seven times, probably more, but I can I can name people. I'm not gonna do that. But I can name people that have come up to me and said, I wish my relationship with God was stronger. I wish I was following Jesus closer. I wish I could hear him better. I wish I was growing more spiritually, which is the finished product. The, but the same is true when it comes to this principle, when it comes to our relationship with God. You can't get the finished product without going through the process. So for over the next few weeks, we're in this series called Trust the Process. And we're going to be getting something. We're going to be... We're gonna be navigating, journeying through some things that are going to feel a lot like some broken eggshells and pouring the batter and filling the sink with dirty dishes and, and going through the steps needed to navigate through the process of what it looks like to grow spiritually, what it looks like to walk closer with Jesus in 2023. And my hope, my hope is that you lean in. And if this is you, if you're like, well, that's something that I want, that's a goal that I have for my life, is to be closer to Jesus than I have been in the past or that I have been in this season, then I encourage you to come every single week and lean in. It's, there's something that I love to do, and I know somebody's probably going to be like, well, you're not supposed to test God. Well, let's just let's call it testing God's word, all right? Let's just call it that. Read what is in here, and then even if you don't love it, put it to practice and see if God is faithful in doing and being the person that he says he is, doing the thing that he say that, that he'll say that he says he'll do, and so here's the thing. Here's the thing. If that's yours, I encourage you to do that. Over the last couple of years, we've been in a rhythm of starting our year. We, we'll probably just continue this on because I believe there's a lot of power in it. Starting our year with 21 days of prayer and fasting. Starting our year with 21 days of prayer and fasting, and so that's the first egg that we want to crack in this process is that one. There's a story in the scriptures. Mark writes it down, uh, at least what we're reading. He writes, he writes this story down about a young boy who had a spirit inside of him, and the father brings his son to Jesus, and this is exactly what the story looked like. The disciples, the followers of Christ, they all had power from Christ to go out, and they were healing people. They were casting demons out. They were casting spirits out. They were, like, things were happening, and they were praying for people, and, things, and, and a lot of power. You saw the power of God coming out in, in, in this way, and this one boy, they would pray for him, and they tried to cast the spirit out, and they couldn't do it, and that's what the father says. He goes, listen, your disciples, they, they, couldn't, they couldn't fix them. They couldn't heal them. I need my son to be well again, and they couldn't do it. And so they performed all these other miracles, but they couldn't do this. So the man asked Jesus to, and this is what Mark writes, how Mark writes it. He says this, Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out like you would if you were a parent and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Some of you, we're going to stop right there, and this is just like a side note, all right? This might be the, the thing that you need to sit in at the beginning of 2023. There might, be, there, might need to, there might be some things in your life that you've never been able to walk away from because you need that same prayer. Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. 
There might be some things in your life that you have ne- you've been like, I don't want to walk away from that. I don't want to leave that behind. I, kn- I think I know what the scriptures say about it. I think I know what God wants for my life. But you know what? And this, and this, this father's going, I've got the prayer for you. Help my unbelief. Help my unbelief. Help me where I doubt you, God. And he continues on, right? This story is about his son, and he's trying to get his son well. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. He continues on, and he says this. It says, Then the spirit cried out. All right, picture yourself a bystander in this story. Convulsed him greatly and came out of him. And so it's crazy, crazy stuff happening right here. And he became as one dead, so that many said, and they were all like, he, he, I guess he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, lifted him up, and he arose. And this is what he says. This, and I love this part right here. This is whenever I look at it and I go, when I, when I refer to the disciples as knuckleheads, it's, it's these moments where, you know, he's like, Jesus, Jesus, come here. Come here. Why couldn't we do that? Why were we were doing all these other things? Why weren't we able? You know, there's there's, there's this very human moment where where his disciples are trying to understand what's going on. It says he asked them privately, "Why could we not cast it out?" So he said to them, "This kind can come out by nothing but prayer and say it with me, fasting, by prayer and." Fasting. In other words, Jesus wants his followers to know that there are some miracles, there are some strongholds, there are some breakthroughs, there are some things on the other side of obedience that, w- that those chains do not get cut. They do not happen unless prayer and fasting are connected together. And I know a lot of us, maybe many of us in here, uh, have, have, have prayed or pray sometimes, or maybe some of us pray all the time, and you pray every single day. Uh, statistically, it would say in a group like this, uh, that maybe half of you pray at least once a month. That's what stats say, okay? And so, it, you know, so a lot of people are, are comfortable with the idea of, of prayer. They know how to talk about praying. They know what that's about, but maybe never really understood what fasting was about. Maybe never really thought about it. Maybe thought, it, you know, that's something that like the extra spiritual people do or, you know, or that's something we just read about in the Bible. Or that's just something you do just for health reasons. And, and I didn't know it was like a spiritual thing too or that that could be a spiritual thing. Maybe you just didn't understand it or really thought it was that important. So I want to take some time to unpack each of these quickly and then give us some next steps forward as a church. And so I love to give definitions that, that are simple. I will explain things, but they're simple so that you could really get it in a small phrase of what these things are. So what is prayer? Simply put, prayer is you leaning toward God. Prayer is you leaning toward God. It is you communicating with God. It is you talking with your heavenly Father. <clears throat> Can I tell you what it's not? It's not you meditating. Meditation is not bad. Sitting there, quiet, listening is not a bad thing. But prayer is actually you talking with your heavenly Father. It's you communicating with the God of the universe. It's talking to him. Jesus gives a whole lesson on this in Matthew 6. He he teaches us how to pray and then gives an example uh, of that prayer. And this is how he he says it, Matthew 6, 5. He says, and when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, then they have received their reward in full. What what does he mean? He means when someone sees someone praying just out loud and and that person's like, oh, good job. Like, that's really awesome that you do that, right? You're like super spiritual. It's, It's the applause of man. And God goes, that's their reward and they've received it in full. They've received the reward, and it's just the applause. He continues on in verse 6. He says this, but when you pray, go into your room, close the door, pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. What's he doing? He's telling you and he's telling me that this part of the relationship He's telling me, I'm just going to speak in my context so it's it's simpler to hear it that way. He's saying, Johnny, that part of our relationship, that's between you and me. 
yeah, there's, there's corporate prayer. There's time where you get together and you pray for somebody or you pray for something or you talk to God in a, in, in, in a, with a crowd of people. There's times, there is times for that. There, maybe with four people or seven people or your connect group or whatever, your family. There are times for that. But understand if that's the only time, then you're missing out on a big part of the relationship with your Heavenly Father. So he says, when you pray, don't just, don't just simply only do it just to be seen that you can pray. He goes, go into your room. Get somewhere that's private. Get somewhere that's, that is yours. I'm not telling you you got to have a prayer closet, but you can have a prayer closet. My prayer closet is a 2010 Ford Flex, which is nice because the seats go back. There, get, get a place, get in a space where it's just you and him and you are talking to your heavenly father. He says that's, that's how you pray. And then he goes on to actually, you know, he says, you know, the, the God of the universe who sees these things done in private will reward you. And then he goes on to give an example of how to pray, uh, which we, most of us probably know. It's called the Lord, we call it the Lord's Prayer, right? I would encourage you to read it, but it's really, it's an example of how to pray, how to prioritize things when you pray, when you talk to God. But I think it's so interesting is that if I would ask anyone if prayer is really that important, even if you were someone that doesn't pray often, you would probably still say yes. You'd probably be like, yeah, that's pretty important. But I don't know how many people would say that about fasting. I don't know how many people would be like, that is equally important, which is funny. This is what's interesting. If you read Matthew 6, he says, and when you pray, and he teaches that, and he goes to the Lord's Prayer, guess what he turns around and teaches right after that? Anybody? Fasting. Right after that, he goes right around, and he goes, and when you fast... Don't make it obvious as the hypocrites do, for they try to look miserable and disheveled so people will admire them for their fasting. I tell you the truth, that is the only, it's the same way, it's the only reward they will get, the applause of man. The applause of man. He keeps going in Matthew, he says this, but when you fast, comb your hair, wash your face, then no one will notice that you are fasting. Except your father, who knows what you do in private. And your father, who sees everything, will reward you. He's saying other people do this. They, other people fast, and they make it to where it's noticeable. This is what would happen in that culture, especially with like extra-religious people. They would, they would fast. But what they would do is on one day, you know, all the other days of the week, they would look a certain way. But then when they would fast, they would look different. They would look disheveled. They weren't put together. They'd get up. They, they'd take that bed head, and they'd just walk right out the door with it. And, and, then, and then what happens? Why are they doing that? Because someone would come up and go, hey, you, don't, you know, they'd hold their stomach. They, and they'd be like, hey, what's wrong? what's wrong? What's wrong with you? And they'd be like, I'm fasting. And then that person steps back and goes, oh, that's amazing, like, like, you're really spiritual. That's great. I'm glad, you know, I'm, I'm glad there's people out there doing that. I'm glad that we really need more people like you. And, 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 and it's the applause of man. It's the applause of man. And that's the only reason to do it. And God goes, look, I'm not trying to be this like super closed off God that doesn't want to reward you. But can I just tell you, if the only reason you do things like this, and this is right here in that culture, he goes, if the only reason you do that is just to get the applause of man, then that will be the only reward you get out of it. But there is a way to get a reward from the God that sees everything done in private. And he goes, I want you to take this to that place where it's also done in private. So get up, brush your hair, put some makeup on if you normally put makeup on, put some cologne on if you normally put cologne on, put your high endurance deodorant on if you normally put that on, all right? Put, put on the same, the same clothes that you put on normally on a Tuesday that you normally put on and just get out the door and don't, don't make yourself, make it a normal day to go out and live your normal life life while you're privately fasting. He says, if that's how you do it, he says, your father in heaven who sees everything in private will reward you. So prayer is leaning toward God. Fasting, simply put for our understanding, is leaning away from the world. Prayer is leaning towards God and fasting is leaning away from the world. Fasting is taking something that you normally depend on and enjoy and abstaining from it. Oftentimes, uh, from food for a certain period of time, suffering through it, suffering through it. 
Uh, you'd ask why. Why would we suffer? What's the reward? You know, isn't God supposed to be like a God of abundance? Then why would we ever want to step into, uh, voluntarily step into something that seems like suffering? Why would we do anything like that? Well, I'll tell you why this is so powerful. Uh, because as people that live specifically for us. Now, fasting is, I think, is powerful for anybody across the whole globe. All right. But specifically for people that live in America. All right. We have a culture of overindulgence, and we have so many conveniences, it is wild compared to the rest of the world. We could have anything, I mean, so quickly, right? You don't have to get off your couch. Grubhub will come to your door, all right? Pretty soon, they're going to be feeding you slices of pizza, all right? <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, I mean, it is, but it's, it's a culture of overindulgence. This is what fasting does. It reteaches us to hunger and thirst for the Lord. It recalibrates us to hunger and thirst for the Lord. Matthew says that blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. We know that he's the bread. The Bible calls him the bread of Jesus, the bread of life, the fountain of living water. But can I tell you that you actually, it's one thing to know that's what the scriptures call him. It's one thing to know that that is a synonymous name for Jesus, which is amazing. It's a whole nother thing to experience him like that. And the only way to actually experience him in that way, being satisfied in him in that way, is actually pushing things from us that are good things, saying they don't control me. I don't find my identity in them. They don't complete me. I'm going to push them back for a season, 21 days for us, to reprioritize, and I'm going to put my soul under God and ask him to search me. See if there's anything against him in me and lead me in the way of what the Bible called the way of everlasting. To lead me in the way of everlasting. So in this 21 days that we're about to step into two together, as we get hungry or as we want the sweets that we're fasting from or as we want to watch the TV that we're fasting from, whatever it is for you, we ask God to come in and fill that void. We ask God to come in and fill that void. And we give more. This is what happens. And we give more and more and more of ourselves to him. As we give more and more of ourselves to him, he begins to get the best of us, not the leftovers. As, as the void of those things happen in our lives, as, as, we're, as we're fasting from them, we begin to give that part of ourselves to him. He begins to get the best of us and not the leftovers. And we do that by saying, I'm going to give up something good for something greater. I'm going to give up something good for something greater. And I'm going to live by faith and not by my flesh. I want the spirit of God to control me, not the spirit of my cravings. So I'm going to push some of those things aside for a period of time. And I'm going to allow my soul to sit under God for that time. And when that void pops up and I'm feeling it, I need to ask God to come in and fill that void. I need to trust him in his faithfulness as we do that because I want his spirit to control me, not the cravings of this world to control me. I don't know about you, but I want a breakthrough. I want to, I want to walk in something new. I want, I want clarity. I want wisdom. I want to be more, a more godly husband and a more godly father. I want to, I want to see some things in, in, in my family and my kids to pursue God even more so and follow after his heart. I want our church to not walk in apathy at any level and be completely sold out for what he wants for us to do. I want us to see things that no one can get the credit for but God. I want to see the addict find sobriety. I want to see marriages that seem like they're on a track for failing to find healing and restoration. I want to see the lost sons and the lost daughters come home to their heavenly father that has his arms open to them. I want to see people find financial, physical, and mental health in their lives. Jesus knows our world is struggling and sees the problems, but I can't be so quick to point out all the problems at the White House if I'm not if I'm not willing to say, God, come search my house. Come search me. Come into it, because it starts with you, and it starts with me. Come search me. Come search my heart. Come search my home. Do a work in me. Do a work in my home. Do a work in this house. And so we invite them in. We invite them in. We lean toward God, 
and we lean away from the world, reprioritizing him as first in our lives. And we invite them in in a powerful way. So as a house, if you want to participate, let me just tell you this. Nobody's showing up to your door and slapping pizza out of your hand. All right? This is not something, this is not a, no one's policing this. But if you're that person that's like, I want my relationship with God to be stronger. I want to grow spiritually. I want to walk with Jesus more than, closer than I ever have before. If, that, if that's you and you want to participate, we're going to position our hearts to see God work in a big way. And beginning tomorrow, January 9th through Monday, January 30th, 21 days, we're going to enter into uh, 21 days of prayer and fasting. And what does that mean for you as I begin to wrap up? That means a couple different things. First of all, you've got to pick something you depend on and enjoy. That's, pick something that you seem to depend on and enjoy. Listen. If you hate veggies, all right, don't fast from broccoli. That's it's not how it works, all right? Pick something that you seem to depend on and enjoy. If you have questions about what that looks like, because it's usually, you know, usually when you think fast, you think fasting from food. Well, can I just tell you something? A- ask a doctor. Depend, like, like figure out what you're going to fast from, then ask if you're just like, I don't know if I can do that, so I need to ask a doctor. You know, I- I'll tell you this because I, I just want to do this in my own life personally. I want to honor God with the privacy of what I'm going to fast, how I'm going to fast over the next 21 days. So I, I kind of struggled with, am I going to tell you guys and, and I think I did last year, and this year I was like, I don't think God wants me to tell y'all. So anyway, that being said, I'm not going to say it from the stage. I, I know I can't fast from food for 21 days, and I'm not advising anyone to fast from food for 21 days. All right? Uh, everyone says thank you. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway. Uh, if, uh, but be wise about this. I do know that, I, that there's going to be sections of, of my fast that are going to look a little different over the next 21 days. And if you're just someone, if you're like, I can't figure it out, I need help, I've got questions, I, I need help figuring this thing out, then, then come to me. I, I, we'll talk about it. Uh, but just in an effort to honor God with this, the next few weeks, I'm going to do it in private. But we're in this together. We're in this together. Pick something that you seem to depend on and enjoy. Be safe about it. Ask a doctor if you feel like you need to, and fast from it for 21 days. Nobody fast from water, all right? Nobody, y'all hear me? No one fast from water, okay? You got to be clear with Twitter world and everything, like you know, people be taking pictures and quoting wrong things. Nobody fast from water. Do this privately to honor your heavenly Father. And when you sense that void, this is what I want you to do. When you sense that void in your life, that's a sign to pray. I'm going to be fasting from something specific. And when I want that thing, I need to know that the reason I'm going to do this is to remind myself that I'm not controlled by that craving. That I want to be controlled by the Holy Spirit. So when I have that void pop up in my, in, you know, in my mind, in my heart, wherever that, wherever that comes from. When it comes up and you start to crave that, I want to run to the Holy Spirit. And I want to say, God, you know what's going on in my body, but I need you to fill that void right now. And I guarantee you the thing I'm talking about, I'm going to want that multiple times during the day. Isn't that so crazy how if you just do that one little part, that one little part, you will probably grow exponentially the amount of time you spend talking to your Heavenly Father. If all you do is take the time where that void pops up and you're like, I really want that. I know I'm fasting from it, but I really want it. And you just take that moment and you go, but every time I feel that, I'm going to talk to my Heavenly Father. I'm going to have a conversation with Him and ask Him to come in and go, man, I really want that. But God, I want you and I want to give you me. So I need you to kind of park your car in that void (laughs) and take care of that for me. And see how your relationship begins to grow with your Heavenly Father. Every time you have that void, have a conversation with Him. Pray every time you feel like you want to go to that thing you're fasting for. But also, also, and this goes along with our whole series. We're going to be talking about some spiritual disciplines. Praying and fasting is is the first one we're talking about. We have a prayer guide that goes throughout this length of time. 
All right, and you can go to nrcc.church slash prayer and fasting, or you can scan that QR code, which is also at the community table in the cafe, and you can scan that, and, it'll, and there's a place to download that guide, and, there's, and you can sit there and read over the next few weeks. Every single day, you can begin to explore these spiritual disciplines, put them to practice, and see if you start putting in. You're going through the process. You're breaking eggs. You're pouring the batter. You're, put, you're preheating the oven. You're going through the steps where you get the finished product, where you begin to grow more spiritually. You begin to walk with Jesus closer. So that, that's what that is. And so get that guide. Start following that guide. And I would even say this, and if you need a physical copy, you can come see me, and I'll get you a physical copy. But I would say this. Don't allow the, the idea of perfection kick you out of the game. Because if you get three days into it, and on the fourth day you mess up, and then you're like, oh, I'm going to get back on on the fifth day. Y'all know where I'm going with this. And on the fifth day you mess up twice, and then you're like, oh, I'm going to get on the sixth day. And then finally on the ninth day, you have, a, you have a successful day. Can I just tell you the enemy wants to look at you and go, see, you messed up. You, you shouldn't be doing this. But God wants to look at you and go, this is what it's actually all about. When he said you're going to find trouble in this world, but take heart, Jesus has overcome the world. He just wants to have a relationship with you. You're supposed to be his son and supposed to be his daughter. You're made in his image. You step into heirship. You step into being a child by giving your life to Christ and surrendering your life to Christ. He, you're, that's what you were made for. And so it's really just about walking through life with God. It was never about perfection or the cross did not need to happen. So when you get back on it or whatever, then celebrate with your heavenly father and realize how often you had to talk to him because of all the mess ups. Can I just tell you something? If your parents in the room, you get that. You get that. You get the fact that you're like, it was never, we're teaching our kids to be perfect, but it was never about perfection. Because when they mess up, we want them to come to us and have that conversation. If they're not able to, then we actually have, we feel like we failed as parents because they're supposed to be able to come to us and talk to us when they've messed up. And God is the perfect version of a dad. He's a perfect parent. And so he's like, yeah, you're going you're gonna to mess up. That's why I sent Jesus to cover your shortcomings, your sin, your mess-ups. Now you have the road back to me. And as you're living life with him, even not in perfection but in progression, walking forward, you get your relationship with God grows. And so I encourage you to be a part of what we're about to step into. And I would also say this. I would encourage you to write some things down that you're praying for. What are you fasting for? What are you praying for? What is the breakthroughs that you're wanting to happen? It may be some circumstances around you. It may be something in you. God, I'm selfish, and I need a breakthrough from that. God, I've got sin in my life, and I need a breakthrough from that. God, I can't seem to put the bottle down. I need a breakthrough from that. So I'm going to step into because sometimes there's only things that get broken and you get delivered from only through prayer and fasting. Write them down. Pray through them. Pray for them. Write down the things that you're asking God for in your life. And come on, church. You can go ahead and stand up. We're going to enter into a time of worship. Come on, church. Let's have a first step into 2023 where we put Jesus first. And here's... I. I will, I will, I would bet every dime I have, everything I have is when you say, if you go against your own thoughts sometimes and your own feelings, say, I got to do it too, and you get into God's word and you go, I'm going to put this into practice. I'm going to test and see if God is and does what he says he'll do. And I'm going to put this into practice. As you're doing that and putting him first in your life, he will begin to lead. The Holy Spirit will begin to lead you. He'll begin to lead your family. He'll begin to lead this church. And I actually believe with all of my heart, if we can step into this together, you will see a revival in this space. You will see people walk away from addictions that they've not been able to walk away from for years. You will see new life change God stories that over uh, over 
the next few months of people going, you know what, I didn't realize I was dead in my sin, but now I found Jesus, and now I'm alive in Christ. You will see those things as we begin to step in here and believe that God wants to step into this space and do something that only he gets the credit for. So I'm asking for us to step in this together. Have, have grace to receive a few more emails from me every week this, for the next few weeks. And let's see what God does. God, this is so much easier to talk about than it is to do. But I'm praying for the Holy Spirit to give us supernatural courage. Thank you for the ability to open up your word and be challenged. Give us the courage to know that it sets us free. Give us the courage to know that when that some of us are just... We're only obedience away from being set free for some things that we've struggled with for so long. God, I pray that you're honored and glorified. I pray that, that your word has spoken to us and, and, and let us know what it looks like to really talk to you, to really have that as a key part of our relationship with you. And to abstain from some things for a season to recalibrate, refocus our lives, to reprioritize you over everything. Because we want to see you work, God. And we love you and pray this in your name. Amen.
I'm so grateful that we have a God that as we step into this, he goes, you're not stepping in this alone. That he's like, I'm going to be in this with you. If you've got some things in your life that you're like, that, that song that speaks to me because I've got some things that I need turned around. I've got some circumstances. I've got some internal things going on that, I, God, I need you to turn it around. I need the Holy Spirit's work in my life to help get that turned around. Well, that's the thing that we're going to step in this together. We're going to believe with you for that as you step into a journey that will help you grow closer with God, that it will help you he either walk with you through it or deliver you from it. One of those two things. Either one, you're going to come out on the end of it going, man, like, I don't, I can't believe, like, in just a few weeks, just the, the first month that, that I've grown closer to God because I've just put him first. So I've simply put him first in my life. Hey, there's a, there's a date that I want you to know about, and I just want to pray for the people that maybe, maybe the thing you need turned around is, just like we were just singing, that there's only one name under heaven that we find life in, that we find our hope in, and that is Jesus. And maybe for you today, maybe the first step is to say, I surrender my life to Christ. I, I do want you to just mental note, put down the date, February 5th. If you've ever been to one of our United event that we have every single year, uh, February 5th, all of our campuses are getting together for a worship night just to celebrate uh, who God is and just really just have a time where we, we see the bigger picture of what God's doing through our church. And so just jot that down in your brain, but I do, I want to lift up the person that think that, that your thought is, it's me that needs turned around this morning. God, I'm lifting that up to you today. You know the person, the people in this space. There's people that need circumstances, and we're, we're praying for that too. But there's people here that their first step, their next step is to say, God, I'm, I'm a sinner. And I can't do this life. And I believe in your son Jesus and what he did on the cross to pay for the punishment of my sins. That I can hang my sins on him on the cross and find new life because he took those into the tomb and he came out without them and defeated death, sin, and the grave. Now there's people in this space that that is their next step is to surrender their lives to you. And my prayer is that it doesn't just stop here that when they leave here they know to grab somebody that has a lanyard or to maybe mark it on a card or talk to somebody they know has a relationship with you, Jesus, about this choice, about this step that they're taking so that they can begin, maybe the first day of their journey tomorrow is that's where they start. A brand new life, celebrating it, found in Christ. And that's how they start these 21 days. If that's you, and I'm not, we're not, we don't have a system writing any names down or anything like that. Can I just, I just want you by faith just to slip your hand up and go, that's me. I need salvation. I need some restoration in my life. I need a miracle in my life to happen. If that's you, I just want to pray for you. God, you know every hand that's up. You know every heart in this space. I'm praying in, in Jesus' name that you that you work in a way that you bring salvation to them. And we can celebrate, maybe in a few weeks, maybe in a few months, but we celebrate a God story, maybe multiple God stories of what you're doing through these weeks. We love you. We pray this in your name. Amen. Church, have a great rest of your Sunday.